I don't think that I, I, we pay enough attention to history, period. But certainly in the case of, of African Americans, our story was not included into that mainstream of American history and Oklahoma history. During the days of segregation, Oklahoma City's African American residents built a vibrant community along Northeast 2nd, known as the Deep Deuce, and later expanded residentially into what is now the JFK neighborhood. Home to greats like jazz guitarist Charlie Christian and Pulitzer Prize winning author Ralph Ellison, the areas had everything the African American community needed hotels, a theater, stores and shops, a newspaper, jazz bars, everything except the fundamental freedom to choose where, and in many ways, how to live. When Oklahoma became a state, the very first law passed, Senate Bill Number 1, was a bill to implement segregation in Oklahoma and Jim Crow laws. And uh, the first one began with segregation uh, of um, transportation, in other words, separate waiting rooms, but it, it, it spilled over into every facet of life for African Americans in Oklahoma. Separate water fountains, separate phone booths, separate uh, educational systems, everything was separate, including residential living areas. Oklahoma, by law, restricted African-American residents to living south of Northeast 4th Street and later Northeast 8th, but the Civil Rights Act of 1964 demanded an end to all segregation laws, including Oklahoma's. One of the inevitable outcomes of the progress that, that came from desegregation and integration was the freedom for people to move to locations that they wanted to live in other places. When African Americans moved away from the JFK, business opportunities in the Deep Deuce began to fade. The area became largely ignored until recent downtown revitalization efforts. But economic development has been in the form of new upscale condos, and the few reminders of the district's rich local history are these simple bronze plaques. In the JFK neighborhood, reminders of that bygone era still linger on street corners and in the abandoned shells of what were once successful African-American-owned establishments like the Jewel Theater. But despite extensive urban decay and failed renewal efforts, many in the JFK still refuse to abandon the home and community they grew up in. <laughs> To understand where we are today in this community, you have to understand the history of this community. And so our congregation, which is 94 years old, has been here on this corner of Six and Everest for almost the entire history uh, of our congregation. We feel like we are being squeezed from the north by the OU Health Sciences Center, being squeezed from the west by the Presbyterian Health Foundation Authority, and being squeezed from even uh, southwest with Bricktown. It's a purely business decision to them, but it gets personal where these homes are occupied and you can't offer people $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 even for their homes and then tell them to go buy another home. Where are you going to find one for $50,000 that you want to move your family in? Who's going to give someone who's 75 years old and that home is paid off for 20 years? Who's going to give them a mortgage? We're not standing in the way of progress but we are looking for economic justice. There are good people here that have been here, would like to stay here, but we understand that the circumstances are changing. And so we're gonna go and make our lives and new memories somewhere else, if we are allowed to do that financially.